Before we begin, I just wanted to say a big thank you to everybody that has recently subscribed, commented, given me a thumbs up, and basically made the YouTube experience more enjoyable. So to you people, a big thank you. So what am I talking about today? Well, I thought we'd discuss filters. Not specifically ND filters, but another type of filter. And for those of you who don't know what an ND filter is, simply put, it's a pair of sunglasses that cuts down the amount of light coming into your camera. And that's really useful for shooting in bright sunlight, and if you want to adhere to that film look, where you can't really change your shutter speed, particularly if you're using the 180 degree rule, then you'd stick one of these bad boys on the end of your lens. And this, in my case, is a variable ND filter. So as you spin the wheel around, it will change the amount of light that comes into your camera. Really useful when you're filming in bright, sunny conditions. So instead of ND filters, I'm going to talk about another type of filter. So if you've ever seen those dreamy film sequences that you would see maybe in a wedding video, a pop video, or some films, where the light seems to be a bit more diffused, the image seems to be not as sharp and a little bit soft, well, they're probably using something called a Pro Mist filter. And that's something that I recently bought because I like the effect and wanted to see what it would look like on some of my films and things that I'm making. So if I grab this Promise filter, you can see that already it's quite diffused in terms of the look that you're getting. Um, I'm not gonna screw it to the front of the lens, but I thought I'd just uh, pop it on and off to show you the different look that you get. So this is without the Promise filter, and this is with the Promise filter. Without the Promise filter, with the Promise filter. Without, I think you get the picture. Anyway, as you can see, it uh, basically diffuses the light, crushes the highlights a little bit, and makes things a little bit more soft, creamy, dreamy, angelic-like. Um, it's not really good to film it in front of me here. Nobody wants to see my morning face. So let's take this camera, let's go outside, let's film some stuff, stick the old Promise filter on the front, and let's see the type of look that we get. Now, I personally like it. You may not, you may think it's too soft, but I think for uh, people who don't want to have that harsh digital 4K look, it's quite ironic really, isn't it, when you think about it. We've always tried to get the best quality out of these cameras, and here we are now sticking these filters on to diffuse and make things look a little bit soft. Hey, it's a personal choice, and if that's something that you like, particularly for filming weddings or other stuff like that, then I think it's really useful. Anyway, enough of the babble, let's get outside, let's do some stuff, take some video, come back, I'll tell you a little bit more about alternatives to the Promise filter, where you can get and buy these things, um, and uh, yeah, all that lovely stuff. Let's go outside! Style? Do you think it's a little bit too diffused, a little bit too creamy? Leave some comments below. Um, I'd be really interested to know if you have one of these types of filters and whether you use it quite often or if you like the look that you saw in the bits of video that I've just shown you. So what filters do I use? Well as I mentioned earlier, 
I use the ProMist Quarter filter from a company called Tiffin. Um, they're not the cheapest filter in the world, but I like them because the quality is really good. I also have the ND filter that I mentioned earlier is from the same company. But I only have this filter and the ProMist filter because I use step-up rings and those are basically rings that you can adapt your lens to fit any size filter. So if you get the biggest size filter, bigger than the lenses that you have, then you can use some step-down rings in that case to match the size of the filter to the size of the lens that you have. Saves you a fortune in buying different filters for the different size of lenses that you have. Um, I think the step down rings are around 10 pounds, so a huge saving, considering these filters range from anything from 50 to 120 pounds. Anyway, I'll put some links in the description below on these filters that I have, some alternatives, the step up and step down rings, and I'd be interested to know if you would like to post a comment on if you use these filters. Are they interesting to you? Do you like the look? Did you like the look in the video that I, that I posted? Is it too creamy? Is it too, you know, blurry? Too underexposed? I don't know. Tell me what you think. I'd be interested to know. I like the look personally. Um, it just gives me another creative tool for when I'm filming um, and coupled with the ND filter makes things look quite nice. If you like the content on this video, please hit that subscribe button, it means a lot. Give it a thumbs up if you like it and please post your comments below. I like reading them and I will try and reply to as many as I possibly can. Take it easy, I'll see you in the next video and let's just keep this dialogue going. Let's get creative and help each other out. See you soon.